With me today, I have Grace Obechina, a health educator. I have Patience Dangara, an education consultant, and Thank I have you. Dr. Primer, a health practitioner. You're welcome. Thank you so much. You. Happy International Women's Day. Well, yes. we all look great, I was saying. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> this is Women's Christmas Day. Yeah. Well, and that's well, with well, the red. Oh. You can say that. But I enjoy your blue. <laughs> <laughs> coincidentally, mm. or really, maybe not coincidentally, the not. color for IWD 2019 is actually purple. Wow. Yeah. So it's not red. Oh, well, it's not well, red, but we're rocking, the red. Yeah. we're rocking the red. We're rocking the red. Nothing wrong with the red. Yeah. Okay, now, we're talking about... <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> we're talking about women, women health. And then today is International Women's Day. Let me start with you, Dr. Baima. Mm. Life as a woman in your field, mm. how has it been? Interesting. Enlightening, um, encouraging, happy, fabulous, impactful. What other positive adjective can I use? Mm. It's been wonderful, I can tell you that. From being encouraged by your parents to go to medical school, footing your bills, internship, house, um, what's it called, NYSC, being retained at the place where you did your service because of your hard work and your dedication, somebody taking interest in you, wanting to mentor you, putting you on the right path to getting married to someone who supports you absolutely then having kids of your own, and they're telling you, Mom, I want to be a doctor. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Well, that sounds like you know? a very interesting yes. life. How about you, Grace? Um, actually, just as she rightly said, being a woman in the medical field, as a nurse, midwife, health educator, and uh, discipline in public health, mm -hmm. it's been a wonderful thing. Mm, it exposes me to a lot of issues in women's health that needed, that needed help. And it's also, it is also exposed me to whom I am as a woman in the area of taking care of my own family, family health, and um, working on harmful traditional practices, especially on the area of that affect women negatively. Okay. Okay. Now patient Dangar You have the same story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you have the same story to tell us. How it's been so far as a woman in your field. Well it's been wonderful and interesting. My field focuses on uh, special needs. So when you look at the the, the lives of women, basically, they're physically challenged, yeah? They have, they need a lot. They need a lot of emotional support, a lot of vocational services, a lot of career choice, a, a whole lot of health issues. So part of what we do is to encourage them to stay healthy, stay focused, and of course, life keep, keeps getting better. Okay, you spoke about health issues. Now, what health issues are particular to women living with disabilities? Okay, um, some of the hospitals are actually not accessible. The wheelchairs, yeah? yeah. And uh, you look at some of the women who, are, who, are, uh, who have hearing impairments, it then means that the doctor needs to learn sign language to be able to understand, understand what them. they are suffering from and for him to be able to provide solutions for them. So until we are able to bridge these barriers, the uh, the women with special needs keep experiencing these kind of challenges so it's actually not easy for them okay yeah. so we have various um, women related health problems and one that has been key especially for young women for me one question that has kept rising and so many women feel like our doctors confused is when it has to do with vaginal douching some people say wash with soap others say don't and so women are not sure on how to take care of themselves should i do this or should i not since we have health practitioners would like you to enlighten us you know the thing with douching is it's a personal choice and it's a personal understanding. If you do not have information about douching and information about your vaginal area, you will not know what you're doing. Sure, there are lots of schools of thoughts on how to take care of that area. Some people will tell you, wash with just water. Some people say, wash with soap without um, astringents in there. Wash with soap without smell, any perfume. Do not wash with antiseptic soap. 
Do not wash with cold water or warm water or lukewarm water or whatever. Do not douche at all. Douching causes infertility and all of that. It depends on what you read, who you believe. But for me, as a health practitioner, the most important thing to note is one. The vaginal area is self-cleansing. It cleanses itself. That is why you have the discharge from morning to night. But you must keep it clean. And what you wear in terms of your underwear, underwear. also matters because that area must breathe. Now, what is the content of the douche? Okay. It's basically water, salt, and some other alkaline estrogen because that area needs to be at a certain alkaline level, yeah. not acidic level. So you do not want to disrupt body pH the, exactly, the pH balance of that area. So if you ask me, Douching is not something that is very common in Africa. Douching is common in Western world. Right. If you ask me, your regular soap and water is fine. Because I have, an, I have experience of someone who after her first child 22 years ago, douched two or three times, and she says till today she has not been able to get pregnant. As far as she's concerned, it was the douching that caused her <laughs> that infertility. Caused her. <laughs> that caused yes. her infertility. Mm. If you want to douche, do your research and be sure that you're using the proper products. Otherwise, please, ladies, stick to your regular soap and water. That's it. I'd rather just soap. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'd rather just water. Just water. water. That is it. A lot of people will say just water. A lot of people say just soap and water. That's it. Whatever soap you decide to use, make sure it's not going to harm that area because that area is very sensitive. It is actually the most vascularized area in the body next to the scalp. That is why when you have a little nick, maybe while shaving or even washing, it starts bleeding yes. and it hurts like crazy. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. So you have to be very gentle when it comes to that area. And we have two medical practices. We have your, your midwife, so you're a nurse, and then now I want to talk about something that has actually been <coughs> going through the mind. <laughs> I said something yesterday. <laughs> said, let me mention now, say what that postpartum depression. And I said, I can never be depressed and I have enough ice cream and pizza to eat. So, what could possibly do postpartum depression in women? Well, the word partum, you know what that means? Yes. After you've given birth, birth postpartum. Yes. Yes. So a lot of people, before they even get pregnant, they went through a lot of stress. Maybe they had primary infertility, meaning they've never, they, never, they were not able to get pregnant, ab initio, or secondary infertility, meaning they had three to five years in between the last child and the yes. index, index pregnancy, right? Or maybe they're having issues with their husband even before they got pregnant. And then while they got pregnant, they started having pregnancy induced complications, hypertension, preeclampsia, diabetes, all of that. Now, when the baby finally comes, the trauma of that child pushing through the vaginal canal or the trauma of going through a cesarean section affects the mind of that woman. So they become depressed. All of these factors are risk factors for depression. depression. They become depressed. So what are the symptoms of this depression? So you start feeling that you're not capable of taking care of your child. You're already sleep deprived. Maybe yes. you don't have a good support system. You start feeling suicidal. You want to kill the child. You want to kill yourself. You're not able to bond with the child. Sometimes your breast milk refuses to, refuses to flow. Two, three days, one week, nothing is happening. So all of this combined. Of course, there's a financial factor. Add, add all of that to the you know, symptoms and signs of depression and the whole thing becomes even worse. So the thing that people tell you or the medical practitioners tell you is the moment you begin to notice all these kind of thoughts, you want to harm yourself, you don't want to even want to see, see the, child, the child, you don't want to see your husband, there's nobody supporting you, your breast milk is not flowing, you can't eat, you can't sleep, you can't do anything, please seek for help. Okay. Or if the baby starts crying excessively, walk into the next room, make a cup of coffee. <laughs> Then calm, yes, calm yourself before you calm the child because if you're agitated, because you start having panic attacks, panic attacks. Yeah. you have panic attacks, you're anxious. If you're agitated and this baby is screaming and you can't calm yourself, you want to hurt yourself and hurt the baby. Yeah. So they tell you simply, walk out of that room, go make a cup of coffee, go and pound your if that is what to sort it out. <laughs> walk around the compound, go take a cold bath, calm, call someone, don't be by yourself, calm yourself down because a lot of women just jack that child, go to the bathroom, and put the child inside water. And then when the child stops crying, they say, okay, they bring the child back, put on the bed. And the, the woman is still confused. She doesn't know what's going on. And somebody comes in, what's going on? He was screaming too much. I needed him to stop. And now he has stopped. I'm okay. So there's something that is, something also happens. Postpartum depression can even lead to postpartum psychosis. 
or postpartum psychosis can come on its own as a different entity. And then you also have the baby blues. So the baby blues is like a few days to two weeks. Psychosis onset one week, but postpartum depression is from a few weeks to more than a year. They know that that is depression. And for some people, the depression continues even after the baby is grown. And people who are more likely to have postpartum depression are people who had had depression before, or there's a family history of depression, or there's a financial problem, or there's a divorce going on, or the pregnancy was unplanned and unwanted. So all sorts of things contribute as a risk factor. Now, Grace, you're a nurse. I'm sure you've encountered women with this. How do you yes, handle it? Definitely. Mm, <laughs> actually, in addition to what she said about what causes parent psychosis, mm. um, lack of preparation from all sets, mm. women, mothers, need to prepare their female child mm. towards this childbearing age. Before a girl gets to childbearing age, the mother would have taught her what is in the childbearing age, how pregnancy comes, how even the mother would have exposed her the way she took care of her. You understand? So that is primary education of childbearing age, keeping a home, taking care of husband, cooking, maintenance of home, keeping cleanliness of the house. Any child that is not brought up primarily on this aspect of life finds it difficult to cope. That is when a child now gets to the age of marriage, you give the child out for marriage without preparing that child for that marriage. Then emotional stress sets in. Because in that marriage aspect, she is expected to care, take, to play her role as a wife, as a mother. She becomes a teacher. She becomes a cook. She becomes a, a doctor, a nurse, a seamstress, a security mentor, guard, everything. 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 And when you see all those things in comparison, it presses pressure. It becomes overwhelming. Mm -hmm. yeah. It brings about emotional stress. A lot of adrenaline is being released. Mm -hmm. And this adrenaline, as we know, is a good hormone in the body mm -hmm. that keeps you alert yeah. and do other good things in the body. The way stress setting that are being released in a maximum capacity that the body cannot cope with. And you know what the adrenaline does? It tells you to fight or it tells you to flee. Free. You know? Exactly. And it can lead to hypertension, it can lead to emotional stress that will lead to depression. Mm. Because when you cannot cope, the brain will be overworked. At times you stop yourself from eating. And when you, are, you stop yourself from eating, what happens? The brain uses energy, glucose, and there is nothing for the brain to work with. A lot of things can be going on there. We start having hallucination, hallucination, confusion, confusion you know, hearing voices like that, that is not, also, and telling you things that are not kill real. Yourself, kill yourself, yeah. kill do your this, child, do that, jump from the window, your husband, yeah. fight your husband, <laughs> and so many things yeah. come in. So in that aspect, actually, as a nurse, we have no such cases, and when you see such cases, First and foremost, because at that depressive mood or psychosis, she will hardly tell you what is going on. She doesn't even know. She doesn't even know what she, what she is doing. So you have to take history, and this history taking has to be through the husband, the mother, caregiver, or caregiver, or people around her. We now tell you what led to this. Is the predisposing factors and the factors that lead to it that will now determine what next to do, how mm. to manage the cases, as to get them back to their senses. And in that aspect and condition she is, there are many things she would have done for herself if she has the knowledge and ability. Mm. And but those things... Are the things that is why antenatal care is very important. 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 Very important
midwives take care of mm. at that point in time that that client or patient is in that state of condition. You try to relieve pains, you try to guide, you try to protect from harmful things, things around that she can use or to harm herself or anybody around. And you try to know what she likes and help her in getting those things. Some of them, they enjoy music. When they are listening to maybe Christian songs, they tend to calm down. So you have to put those things around them and ensure that they feed nutrition. Because some of them, they will not like to eat. They That's go actually on part of the symptoms, signs and symptoms. In that area, you try and ensure that she takes what she likes eating. You ensure that she eats because if she does not eat, it will weigh her down. The body demands that energy to live. She becomes weak. She becomes anemia. She cannot cope. She can't, the child cannot breastfeed because when she's anemic and they're all whatnot, lactation will be not sufficient for the baby. And the baby will suffer with, uh, and it affects everybody in the family. All right, so patience. As she said, antenatal care is very key. Very key. Mm -hmm. Because during antenatal <coughs> care, you give health talk on that certain is they expectations learn. that they needed to know. Certain things that might happen, physiological changes that they may start experiencing as that pregnancy setting. Yep. And when they are aware of those physiological changes, when it comes, it will no longer be a surprising thing to them. Mm -hmm. And you also teach them how to manage certain situations, that, like that physiological changes, mm -hmm. physical changes, so we not allow their body, their shape to change. Mm -hmm. But you have to prepare them that with pregnancy, your shape will definitely change. change. Exactly. <laughs> but after delivery, you can still tame yourself to come to your shape. After delivery, it gets worse. Exercise. Because the belly is bloated, mm -hmm. the, the breasts are large. So you teach them how to That is exercise. part of what even causes yeah. the depression. depression. They, they have you know, body image issues because and they feel they're not beautiful be anymore. they yes. to take care of themselves, themselves because of the baby. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's why they, they are overwhelmed. They're tired. They're mm -hmm. sleep deprived yeah. and everything. So it's just a accumulation of factors. And that is them. why also mm -hmm. during that um, preparation, period mm -hmm. there is need to have a helper definitely and this time around you are not only educating the the mother to be mm -hmm. the husband has to be there oh there's something called so, paternal depression yes, actually yes paternal so, postpartum depression, depression the yes. men are also depressed, depressed. <laughs> yes because <laughs> things have changed yes. things have changed no, yes this and then changed. women the who have that she was multiple taking. babies, mm. women who have multiple babies, twins, tri triplets, quadruplets, are even more susceptible to, to, to depression. To depression. Yes. Yes. Women with single babies, because I mean, you have more than one more child than to take care of. Yes. So they need help. They need help. They need good the support husband system. help. They need the mother-in-law, her mother in -law. own mother, a nanny, all of that. Sister-in-law, yes. brother-in-law, <laughs> everybody must put hands together to assist. <coughs> After six weeks, exactly. when the hormonal balance would have come back to the place, mm. and then they will be able to cope and prepare for another pregnancy. Yeah. Mm. So, when we take all this care, <laughs> preparia, psychosis, or depression will be out of the way. So, it has Just to be primary. Education. Just keep educating. Yeah. I think I agree with, I agree with the fact that um, education is the key, and it's it's the key. but then again, um, I just gave birth a few months ago and I attended antenatal. I wasn't taught any of this. In fact, it took a high level of self confidence for me to believe in myself and say, No, now I used to be pretty. I can always go back to being pretty. To be pretty. You know, it took a whole I, After I gave birth, I was like, For the first six weeks, was what? You have a crime. Do, baby do you know whether it was morning, afternoon, or night? What is happening? <laughs> I wake up by two and decide to stay awake. And you, you cannot sleep. And you, you, really you definitely sleep. can't sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Even positioning to breastfeed that to breastfeed. child Every is problem. a problem. Everything, everything, everything needs to be taught. Everything. And I was like, what is happening to me? 
but then like you said the parents have my mom was there mm -hmm. and then you have a hobby that is always there okay. telling you don't worry you're still pretty and at some point i say you know what baby wait i need to take care of myself <laughs> i had to go and make my hair and okay yes i'm supposed to start time my tummy right i start doing all that and mm. This is it. Fine, I will. The is, the fine. thing is, a lot of, a lot of continental people you understand. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of people do not teach you yeah. anything, else, outside, outside, anything outside, outside the basic curriculum. That's really for for, 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 for continental. They, yeah. they, they, they just stick. They just stick to the. They just stick to the regular. They just stick to the regular investigations. Take your blood for glucose. Take your urine for glucose and check for blood. Take the size of the baby. Mm -hmm. Are you eating well? Is mm -hmm. the baby growing well? Can you feel the baby heartbeats, <laughs> heart rates? <laughs> and the women are behind <laughs> eating. <laughs> well, the women are behind I, eating puff and drinking malt. Uh, They're yeah, not listening yeah. to anything. Always, uh -huh. So nobody's telling you something outside the basic, the basic you know, curriculum. curriculum. Yes, uh, actually, and I think I that might be the reason why some women don't attend antenatal. Yeah, they feel it's a waste of time. They feel it's a waste of time. But but we should tell them that is a wrong attitude. Yes, you must attend antenatal class. Most women believe. I'll go there and get my routine drugs and that's it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's it. not what yeah, it is. That is the issue. No. So and again, no, no, where, no. where did you attend your attendance? That is exactly. it. And what time do you go there? Exactly. Because most of the girls mm -hmm. or ladies, mm -hmm. they don't go when health talk is going on. Going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. They will go late. Mm -hmm. By then, health talk yeah. is over. Finished. Finished. Then they will now come and they do the... Start just with each other. <laughs> Where's my medicine? Yeah, wait, it's finished. No, so they don't take that my yellow talk. and they don't take medicine. that health serious. talk serious. Yes. Even when somebody is giving them the, the health talk, mm. their minds are not there. Mm. They are looking at who wears the best. Or they are just staying. Or they are buying baby's clothes. Because yeah. I always see All them sell things. baby's clothes. So and there is practice. need for you, for you really when you attend, you attend on time. Mm -hmm. And you listen because that and this time around is no longer you going alone you go with your husband mm. yes so the whatever education your health education you are giving to the pregnant woman mm. you are only learning. giving the, the husband, husband so that he can help you mm. in certain areas that you are not able to mm. and that will assist you to be able to control your emotional stress mm. and physical stress that can lead to emotional imbalance mm. but ladies should know them. that whether the husband comes with them or not mm. They must go. If he doesn't want to come in the house, no problem. He must go and they will encourage him and then, to come now. And then, guess what? You know, even if the job, that's the exactly what I wanted to depends say. On the job. It depends on the job. But so, a lot of things are changing. We have paternity leave now, you know that, right? Yes. 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 Maternity leave has been increased mm -hmm. from 30 days to 60 days to 90 days to 120 days. Wow. Yes. Four months. Yes, four months now. Mm -hmm. Yes. They are giving men, they are giving men two weeks to a month as well. In Nigeria here, not abroad. Oh, wow. Yeah, but then, no, is it actually it's a private be. organization or is it only government? No. Because I think majority of this population we are talking about are in the private sector. No, 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 no. The people who are giving paternity leave and maternity leave mm. is not in the private sector. Okay. It's in the it's government sector. It's it is in policy now. It is. Policy. It's in policy yes. now. Yes, but because the thing is not, not every state. Developing, mm -hmm. yes. not every state not has every ratified state. it. Not every state, but I know the truth. I know that we are developing health and gen gender and health policy. Yes. Okay. And in that gender and health policy, mm -hmm. we are also considering the aspect of giving paternity leave. It's already in been. The policy. It's already been given. And, uh, it has to be within two weeks mm. to enable the man, the man, man to help, help the wife in the house. Two to four weeks, yes. Yeah. It's already yeah. Lagos State. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That, yeah. With that, that help will be there. Even when mother-in-law or not around, not, whoever yes. is not around, the they, they is can there. cope yes. with Yes, and something other. else that we should not overlook for people who are enlightened enough, who are educated enough, Whatever you feel you did not you did not get from the antenatal clinic, please Google is your friend. Yes. Google is your friend. Your mother is your friend. Mm -hmm. Other women who have had the experience are your friends. Mm -hmm. Open Share your mouth and ask. Yes. Ask Speak questions. Yes. yes. Ask questions. Okay. Um. Uh, you. How much can Google really be our friends? When you said Google is your friend, mm -hmm. most times you start to have symptoms and then you Google it and oh, you find oh. out you probably have cancer somewhere. If you go <laughs> by the symptoms, you're no, seeing no, no. There. So how? There are well, there are sites. Check? There are sites yeah, that are health renowned. Site. Whenever you have to want to research anything to do with health, go to the CDC website or the WHO website. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. CDC website, Center for Disease Control, 
and World Health Organization websites. They give you what you need to know. There's no, you know, back, some, uh, there, there are no negative or false, false information <coughs> or for Nigeria. Now, Fisher, you you of you with, um, people with disabilities. Yes. Now, how do you handle women with disabilities, their health, especially pregnant women? How do you handle, or how do you handle pregnant women with disabilities that are falling into postpartum depression? Okay. Have you ever experienced any? And how do you we handle? we have, but just one. Now, what we do is. From that stage, okay, we, we take enough time to prepare them. Okay. A, a, a mental health is very important very because just, for, just the fact that the person has disability, it's a whole lot. Mm. So the person needs to accept that this is me, this is who I am, yeah. I may never get up from this wheelchair, and so I have to accept me the way I am, right? So going through, we maintain a steady counseling session with them okay. till they give birth and, and even not after to cut that, you off darling not yes, to cut you off darling the woman who has sorry the woman who is disabled in that wheelchair you want to find out that pregnancy was she raped is yeah. she married mm -hmm. does she want that pregnancy yes. before anything else yes, yes. because so not everybody them, willingly go and marry yeah. someone in the yeah. wheelchair yeah. so how did the pregnancy come about oh, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. we take them through a journey of counseling mm -hmm. throughout the counseling they are, they, are, they, are, they are free, they are free because we maintain a steady communication. They always share their challenges. Like she said, we have an issue of someone who doesn't even want to get married. Why? Because all the time she has several attempts on rape. But the good thing is none of them ever succeeded. But the moment she's sitting and you tap her, she will just... You know this Very great fear you yeah. have? Yeah. Yes. Panic so, yeah, so we had to deal with that and prepare her for marriage because I asked her, do you want to have your own children? She said yes. Because most of them, it's only the spinal cord that is bad. The womb is in perfect shape. Yes. You understand? So we prepare them. Of course, we maintain a close relationship with them. If you see us with them, they are like our sisters. We do, uh, we have a lot of them in some NGOs. So we also do community outreach to include them because some of them don't even know that they have right to marry or to give birth to children because they have focused more on the challenges of the health sector. Yeah. Like the one I earlier mentioned about uh, sign language, you know, yeah. a woman, a woman who is pregnant and she's unable to eat, she might be experiencing serious pains in her tummy. How is she going to explain it to that doctor when she goes for consultation on maternity? When, or oh, sorry, or oh, oh, prenatal care, uh, antenatal care, when so, there's no an interpreter, you understand? So gradually, gradually, gradually I am seeing certain sectors having interpreters, not all, not all. Even the government sectors don't have interpreters, right? So what some of these, what we do is, some of their relatives actually learn the sign language, yeah, so they go with them to the hospital. They will now tell their relatives everything that is being going that is wrong with them. So their relatives will, will, will relate to the, to the doctor. doctor. But then you know how bridge, uh, how channel of of communication can be can be mm -hmm. tempered. Lost in translation. Yes, I can tell you. I can tell you. Um, uh, uh, my back is aching, and then during interpretation, yes. you might see my stomach or something. You know. You can you you cannot just maintain that strict channel of communication. Mm -hmm. So if you focus more on getting interpreters, because that's basically their problem. Who to interpret? Mm -hmm. They need a voice. They need a voice, right? And uh, yeah. to add to what you have said about physically challenged or person with disabilities, disabilities. Yeah. actually in health center they have developed seizure reproductive rights. Of persons yeah. with disability, okay. especially women and girls. And in that um, policy that is already, it has gone through the National Council yeah, of Health. I know, it's been And uh, by God's grace, mm -hmm. by next month, mm -hmm. it will be launched wow, and disseminated. So, good. because that's in good. that policy, okay. all these things we are taking care of, yeah. including rape, mm -hmm. because they are always uh, exposed to rape, yeah. violence, violence, and the rest of them. And even the hospital setting is not conducive mm -hmm. for yeah. them. It's yeah. not, I mean, the environment. Yeah. Because like somebody on a wheelchair, if, if you look at most of, our, of mm -hmm. our 
uh, structural uh, institutions. Mm -hmm. It's like one step, two step, three step, and they are about. And somebody on a wheelchair cannot, cannot plan. And even some of the instruments used in the hospitals are not friendly, to, friendly them. to them. So we must make our health institutions mm -hmm. to be friendly to them, both equipment, structures, <laughs> and even the manpower. Yeah. Just like you rightly said, somebody with Air in, uh, yeah, impairment, need sign language, sign language so interpreters. So, so all these you, things. You know the thing. Let me just say something very quickly. It's not just the health infrastructure or the health sector that needs to include general persons with disabilities. It's general. It's every sector, every aspect of every life. aspect of life. Mm -hmm. They must do what they call the inclusiveness factor. Yes. Because yes. Australia yes. right yes. now is the world leader. Wow. In inclusiveness when it comes to people who are physically it's challenged. Yeah. Yes, people who are physically challenged. Disability. And then the lady who has a hearing impairment, mm -hmm. if there's nobody to do the sign language for her, she can write. Yeah, she would the doctor and her can communicate we, through it. We have some with multiple. We yeah. have some of course, yes. with multiple this is just, conditions. Of course, mm. this is just a, a suggestion. Can't write. So, if you cannot write, then you definitely need an interpreter. Yes. Or if you want to, no, there's a way that you must be able to communicate if there's nobody there to bridge the gap bridge between you and the doctor. Because, because if you do not have, if, if there's nobody to communicate to, mm. to bridge the gap between you and the doctor, mm. people will just stay at home and not go. Exactly. And that is not what we want. Yes. Go, go to that hospital. You and the doctor, you must find a way. You must find a way. Because, because when you're pregnant, mm -hmm. you are susceptible to anything. Yeah. Yeah. Because that is a very vulnerable, very fragile, vulnerable and vulnerable. fragile situation. Yes. So you must go to the hospital, please. All right, before please. we go now, I'm going to ask a very quick question that we're running out of time. Now, let me start with you. You're a mom and you have a successful career. How do you manage it? How do you balance it? <coughs> Actually, you know, women, it is said that they are like multitasked. <coughs> In the sense that you take care of the family, you take care of your husband, the children, mother in law, other in law, your mother, your yourself, yourself and even other dependents. Yes. And you still go to work. And you need to balance the business <coughs> so as to be able to fulfill your role. It comes to rule, relationship, and as well as norms, belief. All those things have to <coughs> in order to be able to balance that um, demand at work and demand at home. Because we have our cultural beliefs, mm -hmm. which you, as you are working, you have to have them behind your mind, and you have rules that are expected of you as a woman <coughs> the home and the office setting. Mm -hmm. So you must define a way to balance that the equation the, to be able to meet up with the two okay. and still come out fine. fine. How about you, the real big, you know, we're of time. How about you, patient? Okay, uh, for me, I think uh, I was uh, I well prepared. Asking. I was well prepared. As a growing up child, I, I, I know my expectations as a woman and as a wife. Mm -hmm. So I had a very good background and I'm prepared to face whatever challenges I come. Life transition. Yeah. Dr. Brian, how do you balance everything? Well, the you know, and something past? fantastic is happening today, the world over. Mm -hmm. IWD 2019, International Women's Day 2019, the motto is guess what? Balance Hashtag for better. Balance, balance for better. For better. So all of the gender equality we are talking mm -hmm. about, equality here, equality mm -hmm. there, equal pay, and all of that, just boils down to how do you multitask? Yeah. And how do you come out on top? Yeah. So one way or the other, we find a way to make it work. But for us to even make it work better, our husbands are our champions. They are our support system. So if they, not, they did not give us the support, we can make it work. That's it. It's actually been an interesting day. Honestly, <laughs> and very enlightening. Very enlightening. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate your presence. Thank you very much for coming to the show. Mm -hmm. Always a pleasure.